Silver Dollar City's Powder Keg is probably one of the weirdest roller coasters I have ever ridden. Don't get me wrong, it is a fun ride, but even just the history of this thing is just so bizarre. This ride started off as a Premier Rides water coaster called Buzzsaw Falls, and in 2003, they removed the water coaster part and used part of the track, and then added onto it using SNS track, connecting the two, creating an SNS launch coaster. Like, what the heck? That's just so strange. I mean, great use of, you know, what is already there, but the whole concept behind the thing is just really strange, and you can even see that in the ride layout. So let me dive into this ride a bit more so those of you who haven't ran this can get a better idea of what this ride experience is like. So you're going to first start by boarding your SNS trains and these are all very similar to if you've ridden an SNS Scream and Swing. These are essentially the same restraints but it's on a roller coaster. So already, you know, kind of weird. But you slide out of the station and actually go up this like transfer up to the launch track. It literally slides you up and over using Using this counterweight. It's crazy. It reminds me of how like the Mr. Freeze roller coasters slide you out onto the launch track. This kind of does the same thing. So you pull forward a bit, come to a stop, you're just going to roll back a tiny bit and then there's this stoplight that goes from red, yellow to green and you launch out. This is 0 to 53 miles per hour in just over 2 seconds. So it's a pretty forceful launch. Remember, SNS is the same company that did Dota Donpa, which is the world's fastest acceleration on a roller coaster. I'd say it's a forceful launch. So I really enjoy that and you actually go up and over an airtime hill first thing. So again, remember how I said this layout is kind of weird? We first start things off with an airtime hill and then following it we have this section that is pretty much all low to the ground so you really can't get too much footage of it from inside the park. But it's essentially just twisting around low to the ground and then you actually switch over to the buzzsaw falls section. You can literally see where the track switches over. It is a completely different track style. And I wouldn't say that one style of track is smoother than the other, like you won't feel the transition or anything. The transition is done very smoothly. And that section is what leads you into the lift hill. Yes, this coaster has a transfer track, a launch, and a lift hill. The highest point is in the second half of the ride. Like I said, this ride is just weird. Just over 100 feet tall, you go into a turnaround and your drop I'd say it's a decent drop, it's not very steep or anything, and I also wouldn't say that this is one where you really come like soaring out of your seat in like any crazy ejector moment or anything. Probably the most airtime you're going to get on this ride is on that airtime hill after that launch. But after that drop, you actually go into this like bank turnaround and then into the brake run. So that section after the lift hill is rather short in my opinion, most of the ride is spent from the launch leading up to the lift hill. So if I had one complaint, I would say it would be kind of nice to see it like balanced out a bit more where you see the second half of Powder Keg like just as long as the first half. But also, I'm glad that the lift hill and drop is there in the first place because if the ride just ended and didn't have that section with the lift hill or drop, then the ride would be like really short. So I am glad it's there, definitely. But I think this is the ride that when you go to Silver Dollar City, definitely make sure to ride it just because it's such a strange experience. You know, it, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, it's a fun coaster. It isn't gonna like blow you away or anything. I think it's a pretty cool ride, but it's not one also that I would say would be at the top of many people's bucket list of like rides that they must do or anything, you know? For rides at Civil Hour City, they're like that, you go for Outlaw Run or now Time Traveler. Powder Keg almost kind of gets forgotten because now Silver Dollar City has that awesome top two. But this ride isn't bad or anything. I think this would be a good coaster to start some kids off to. Like, introduce them to launches. It's not super tall. I mean, it doesn't go upside down or anything. It's definitely a thrill coaster, but also I think that this coaster would be better to start kids on before rides like Wildfire or Outlaw Run, or even probably Time Traveler, because I think that drop out of the station might be intimidating to some. So it's not a bad ride at all. I do like how it has has good use of the terrain and you really are whizzing by those trees for a good portion of the ride. So when you have all that woods like flying by you, it just makes you feel like you're going faster than you might actually be. So for Powder Keg's final score, I'm going to give it a 7. I think it's a fine ride. It's a good fit for Silver Dollar City. It's really a one of a kind.
So like I said, definitely make sure to ride this at some point when you come to visit. I'd say the uniqueness factor should be a good enough reason. So you can let me know down in the comments below about what you think of Powder Keg. If you believe that I am right, if you think that I am wrong about what I've said, you can let me know. And then of course stay tuned for more coaster reviews. I have plenty more coming here at Coaster Studios. Thank you for watching.